Hey everybody, welcome back to GK Gameplay. Ugh, my childhood. It was lost long ago, but it's all coming back to me. Today we're playing Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, one of my favorite games from when I was a kid. So we're just gonna jump right in, play as GK here. I haven't started this file yet, I just made it. So we're starting right at the beginning. In the vast, deep forest of Hyrule. Long have I served as the guardian spirit. I am known as the Deku Tree. Yeah, giant tree spirit. The children of the forest, the Kokiri, live here with me. Each Kokiri has his or her own guardian fairy. Except for the main character at the moment, anyway. However, there is one boy who does not have a fairy. And that all changes when we meet the most annoying fairy in the history of ever. Navi! Alright, so he's shivering because he's cold for some reason. Uh, he has a house, why doesn't he have a blanket? Alright, and this is a flash to the future here. A vision of things to come. Because I guess Link has latent psychic powers that he only ever uses once. It's Princess Zelda running away from the castle, chased by Ganondorf! Such a great villain. Not because his motivations are great. His motivations are, I'm evil, I will take over the world. <laughs> but they build him up really well, so... He's just this overarching shadow throughout the entire game. Navi, Navi, where art thou? Come hither. What's with the Shakespearean English all of a sudden? Oh, Navi the fairy, listen to my words. The words of the Deku Tree. Dost thou sense it? The climate of evil descending upon this realm. Malevolent forces even now are mustering to attack our land of Hyrule. For so long the Kokiri Forest, the source of life, has stood as a barrier deterring outsiders and maintaining the order of the world. But before this tremendous evil power, even my power is as nothing. Maybe because you're a tree. Sorry for the long cutscenes here, uh, and like all the exposition, but you know, beginning of a game, you gotta get the story in. The youth whose destiny is to lead Hyrule to the path of justice and truth. Uh, I'm assuming that's me. Navi, go now! Find our young friend and guide him to me. I do not have much time left. Fly, Navi, fly! The fate of the forest, nay, the world depends upon me. Alright. Okay, so now Navi's gonna come find us. And I'm not gonna lie, when I was a kid, and I played this game for the first time, this cutscene here blew my freaking mind, because this was, like, the height of graphics at the time, you know? Like, now everything's super realistic and gritty, and, uh, but this, back in the day, you know, I'd been so used to playing the Super Nintendo with its 2D graphics and all this other stuff, so this, just absolutely mind-blowing. Okay. But yeah, no, the whole flying through Kokiri Village. It also gives us a great overview of the place, lets us know where things are, so we have a general idea of where we're going once we actually start moving around. Alright, so now we found our house without any problems, I suppose. And now the annoyance shall begin. Hello, Hello GK, wake up! The Great Deku Tree wants to talk to you. GK, get up! I would do a voice for her, but I'm not very good at feminine voices. Can Hyrule's destiny really depend on such a lazy boy? Yeah, call me lazy. Uh, do that later, after I've slain like eight giant monsters. Alright. Guess I'm up! So what do you want? Clearly to bring me to a giant tree. You finally woke up. I am Navi the Fairy. The Great Deku Tree asked me to be your partner from now on. Nice to meet you. The Great Deku Tree has summoned you. Let's get going, right now. Yeah, and this is basically how Navi acts throughout the entire game. Anytime I want to do anything, she will send up a message that I have to listen to, and it's usually quite irritating. Yeah, but more on that later. Alright, that's Saria running up the path here. Cool, cool, cool. Story-wise, she's our childhood best friend. Yahoo! Hi, GK. Who introduces themselves like that? Really? Alright, so we go down and talk to her. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I've played this game a million times, so I basically know what's going on. Um... Finally, Fairy came to you. Wow, that's great news. I'm so happy for you. Now, you're a true Kokiri, GK. Is that right? The Great Deku Tree has summoned you. It's quite an honor to talk to the Great Deku Tree. Uh, 
I guess so. I'll wait for you here. Get going. Go see the Great Deku Tree. Yatcha! So I guess the bright side is I generally know where things are, so I can save you hours of me fumbling around trying to find things because I'm generally aware of where I'm supposed to be going. Good way to make some quick money jumping across those stones right there. So let's go talk to this douche nugget. Hey you, Mr. No Fairy, what's your business with the Great Deku Tree? Without a fairy, you're not even a real man. What? You've got a fairy? Say what? The Great Deku Tree actually summoned you? What? Why would he summon you and not the Great Mito? Maybe because you're a giant fucking dildo. I don't believe it, you aren't even fully equipped yet. How do you think you're going to help the Great Deku Tree without both a sword and a shield ready? What? You're right, I don't have my equipment ready, but... If you want to pass through here, you'll, you should at least equip a sword and a shield. Sheesh. I hate that guy. Mido is such a flaming douche. Alright, so the first time I played this game, I wandered around lost for about three hours looking for the goddamn sword and he's trying to talk to me. The Great Deku Tree has summoned you. Please come with me. Yeah, I can't do that right now, Navi. I need a sword and a shield. And that's what I'm talking about right there. Alright. So, yeah, I wandered around for three hours, couldn't find the sword. Now I know where it is. Because the first time I played, I just for some reason couldn't figure out that this little crawl space was here. So we go through here. And we find the little Kokiri training ground. Okay, so the sword is somewhere in here. Also, there's a lot of money, which we're going to need if we want that shield. Alright, so we avoid the Indiana Jones boulder there, and come around here. And look, a giant chest. I wonder what's inside. Uh, another problem I have with this game is every time you open a chest, they play this mystical, wonderful, like, little cutscene, you know. Da -na 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 -na. You got the Kokiri Sword! The equipment subscreen, select it with the cursor, and equip it with A. This is a hidden treasure, the Kokiri, but you can borrow it for a while. Be sure to practice with it before you really fight. Yeah, no, so every time you open a chest, no matter what is inside of it, sorry, my, my game is glitching out because of my recording software. Okay, so no matter what's inside of it, it plays that. It, it could be something as simple as like, here's five dollars, and it will be all mystical and wonderful again. Every time. Alright, so let's gather up some money so we can afford the shield here. Uh, the boulder went that way, so I think we have enough time. Yes, we made it through. Cut down some grass, see if there's any money in it. And to kill the sign, because I hate signs. Signs are evil. Worse than Ganondorf. Ganondorf orchestrated this whole sign conspiracy, I'm telling you. He is the reason signs are everywhere and they must be destroyed. Alright, so now the, the most entertaining part of this quest comes along, and we get money for cutting grass and throwing rocks. Now let's cut all this down, because there's bound to be some money in at least one or two of these grass tufts, and kill the sign, because signs are evil. Uh, another sign. Hey! Killing that one gave me money. Now I have more than one reason to kill these things. Yes, I'm going to say kill instead of destroy. I believe signs are sentient beings. And if you don't agree with me, you're literally Hitler. A by the stone, pick it up. A by the stone, pick it up. Mean old Mito, he made me pick up the rocks in front of his house. Yeah, yeah, another instance of Mito being a douche. Alright, so we break these rocks, get the money. I think if Mito knew there was money inside these rocks, he'd be cleaning this shit himself in seconds. Smash another rock. And another rock. Get money. Yeah, this is... Not the most entertaining part of the game, sorry about that. The bright side is... You know, it doesn't take too long. I think the the shield we're looking for only costs about 40 rupees. So now I'm going to break into Mido's house and steal all of his stuff. Because he has oppressed the Kokiri people for far too long and I won't stand for it. Take his money. Hey, that gave me enough money to obtain the shield. Huzzah. Got a recovery heart, uh, life energy, yeah, okay, I don't need it right now, though. Um, more money. Alright, let's move on. Uh, I could just go buy the shield, but I'm going to go and show you another instance of Mido's douchery after I pick up this rupee. Um, okay, so we gotta go over to Saria's house. You know, our childhood friend and all. Because apparently Mido has the hots for her, 
and he's making people cut the grass in front of her house. Just listen to this poor, poor Kokiri peasant being bossed around by Mido. Mido told Sari he would do it, so she would like him, but I'm the one doing all the work. See? Asshole. You and Sari are close friends, so will you help me cut the grass? I'll let you keep anything that you find while cutting it. Yeah, so if I find money, I can keep it. Normally this is, you know, a decent way to get stuff, but I already have enough money. I'm just doing it because... Why am I doing it? You know what? I don't even know. I guess I'm just so used to cutting grass and getting stuff. Hi, GK. Look up this way. Look over here with Z and talk to me with A. Okay. Yes, yes, that's how you use a fairy. It's so great that you finally have a fairy partner. I'll teach you how to talk to people using your fairy. I already know how to do this, so let's skip through it. I just imagine that she just said that, like, super fast in, like, friggin' fast-forward mode. Alright, so we got our shield. I got a Deku shield! Switch to the equipment subscreen. Yes, I know how to switch to the equipment subscreen game. R to crouch and defend. If you press R while Z-targeting, you can move while defending. Good to know. No, I don't want to buy anything else. Let me just step out here and equip my shield. Oh, eh. It's uh, functioning properly this time around, so save the game, because saving the game frequently is a good idea. And we'll swim over here, tell Mito we got the stuff. If you want to see the great Deku tree, you should at least equip a sword and a shield. I know, I have them. And what's that? Oh, you have a Deku shield. And what's that? Is that the Kokiri sword? Good grief! Well, even with all that stuff, a wimp is still a wimp, huh? I, the great Mido, will never accept you as one of us. Asshole! Shoot, how'd you get to be the favorite of Saria and the great Deku tree, huh? Grumble, grumble. Alright, yeah, call me a wimp after I come back, having slain a giant monster in the depths of the Deku Tree! Because that's where we're going. Alright, uh, these things. Yeah, Navi will tell you about a monster every time you click on it. Um, if you press up C. And I mean every time. Even if you kill thousands of them, if you target them and hit up C, Navi will tell you the exact same information. Uh, Baba looks withered to her if you touch it. Yeah, okay, I know, Navi, I know. See, the funny thing is, the first time I didn't realize I need a sword. <laughs> okay, hold on. I almost forgot, because it's been a while since I've played. But tell me, Mar uh, tell me the great Deku tree doesn't look like the love child of Mario and a Diglett. Oh, Navi, thou hast to return! The GK, welcome! Yeah, now all I'm gonna do is picture him talking in the Mario voice. Listen to what I, the Deku tree, am going to tell thee. Thy slumber, these past moons must have been restless and full of nightmares. As servants of the evil gain strength, the vile climate pervades the land and causes nightmares to those sensitive to it. Yeah, I'm not going to do the Mario voice the whole time. Ugh. Verily, thou hast felt it. GK, the time has come to test thy courage. I have been cursed. I need you to break the curse with your wisdom and courage. Dost thou have the courage enough to undertake this task? I'm gonna say no. No, I'm just fucking with you. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Then enter a brave GK, and now too, Navi. <laughs> Fucking, yeah. Mario had sex with a Diglett, and the Deku Tree's mother was that Diglett. Oh, uh, jeez. Okay, so quest time. Let's enter the tree. <laughs> I'm not gonna get over this. Uh, I get a laugh out of this all the time. He looks so goofy. <laughs> Uh, I know he's supposed to be this big sacred god tree, but I can't help it. Oh, this is, uh, the inside of the Deku tree. One of those cases is much bigger on the inside than it looks on the outside, I guess. Um, okay. So, um, this is the inside of the tree. More of these things. We can kill them. Hey, we got a new item. Got a Deku nut. Uh, yeah, we can use them like flash bombs. So let's equip these to our C buttons here real quick. Uh, in case they are useful, um, cut these down, get some money and or hearts, whatever's inside. Money, I guess. Alright. Fight some more of these things. Probably could have just walked around them, but, you know, why not? I'll smash them. And, you know, Navi and her great advice, when it lunges at you, it'll stand upright. Cut it. Okay. Or I could just kill it, you know, that works too. 
And now, uh, no, I didn't want to do that. I want to climb the ladder. There we are. Up the ladder. To the top. So we follow this pathway around. Eventually, we'll get the items we need. Like, uh, one of the things we need is the slingshot, which is one of the first things we come across. Not in that giant chest. Uh, Skull Wall Tula. Uh, see, I can climb. But look at this wall. The vine's growing on it. Give it a rough surface. Maybe you can climb it, GK. Maybe I could if it weren't covered in frickin' spiders. Alright, so let's pop this open. Yeah, see, I know what's in here. It's a map. And it's super mystical about the fact that I just obtained... the dungeon map. Da -da -da -da. Blue chambers of places I've already visited, blah blah blah. It basically just tells me chambers in the dungeon that I've gone to, where I haven't gone to. Later, when I pick up the, the compass, that'll tell me where items are. So I go through this door, this is... You can open a door by standing in front of it and pressing A. I'm... Pay attention to what the action icon says. That's the blue icon at the top of the sky. I know, Navi! Ugh, okay, so now we gotta fight that thing. It will hide in the grass if you get close to it. Bounce its nuts back at it. <laughs> gotta bust a nut on its face with a shield. Alright, so now I gotta go catch it. Get back here. Forgive me, Master. If I give you a clue, will you let me go? Sure. When you jump off a high cliff, if you hold forward, you will roll on the ground when you land and won't get hurt from the fall. Can't guarantee it will work, though, if the cliff is really, really high. <laughs> this seems like something I could have learned by accident without having to be told by a thing that spits nuts at me. Okay. So, let me replenish my health, and we will go through this door into the chamber wherein we find the item we seek. And here it is! The slingshot. -na -na -na. Again, super mystical. I mean, this time I can see it. It's an item we didn't have before. So I'm gonna leave the video here, and we'll pick up next time and finish off the inside of the Great Deku Tree. And it will be a great time. Wonderful time, really. The best of times. It's telling me how to use it. Uh, okay, I kind of have an idea. Alright, see you all next time!